Hi there, I'm Jack from Twinkle, and in today's lesson, we are looking at the snow. Your learning objective for today is to be able to explain why it snows. We'll also be looking at what affects the speed that snow melts at, why we wrap up warm outside, and what snowflakes look like. Before we start, you might want to check if you have a few things at the ready. Paper, a pen or pencil, and some scissors for an activity later. Snow is obviously optional, but if you have snow, then get a few plastic bottles and maybe a marker pen or some decorative items ready for a little experiment. Now, when it snowed before, you've probably had a snowball fight, or made a snowman, or gone sledding. But have you ever thought where the snow comes from? Well, to answer this question, you need to look up at the sky. So you might already know how rain forms from doing the water cycle. Heat from the sun turns moisture from oceans, lakes and rivers into something called water vapour. Water vapour is a gas that rises then cools, and then finally turns into clouds. When the buildup of water droplets in the clouds get too heavy, they eventually fall as rain. But what about when it snows? Well, when it snows, before the water droplets can fall as rain, they freeze, and when water freezes, it becomes ice. Now obviously, we know this better as snow. A little bit later, we'll look at snowflakes the little bits of ice that make up snow. So you know all about how snow forms, and I'm sure you've seen snow melt before. But have you ever wondered why snowmen and piles of snow take longer to melt? Well, here's an experiment all involving plastic bottles and snow. You're gonna be making some bottle snowmen. This experiment is all about seeing how long it takes snow to melt. Start off by filling a plastic bottle with snow. Once you've done that, you could customize the bottle to look like a snowman. If you've got a marker pen, you can draw some eyes on. And if you've got some orange cards, you could place a nose. Once you're done, place the bottle in the snow. This first bottle will be what is known in an experiment as your control, something to compare your other results with. You'll be comparing your control to these other bottles. You need to see which bottle melts fastest and try and explain why. So how could you change the other bottles each time? You could leave the other bottles in different places. Try different rooms in your house. You could even put one in your fridge. Or maybe try burying a bottle in the snow. You could vary how much snow you put in the bottle. Place them all in the same spot and see how much longer it takes a full bottle of snow to melt. Or try wrapping your bottles in different materials. What material is best at keeping the snow cold? What is the best insulator? Speaking of insulators, why do we wear hats, coats, scarves when we go outside? Why is it important that we wrap up warm and how do they keep us warm? Our bodies produce heat. When we're outside on a cold winter day, all this heat would escape and our bodies would get very cold. It's dangerous to let our bodies get too cold. When we do get cold, your body starts shivering to keep warm. Your brain doesn't function properly. It gets harder to catch your breath and you could get very ill. So it's important we stay warm. We wear thick coats and woolly hats because they are great insulators. The heat our body produces doesn't escape and instead gets trapped, keeping us warm. Animals have natural insulation. For instance, a dog has fur to keep it warm. Us humans don't have natural insulation, which is why we wear coats, hats, scarves, gloves, 
thick socks and more to keep our body heat. The opposite happens with your snowman bottles. If you wrap it up, it will keep the cold in and it would take longer to melt. So you now know how snow forms and why we wrap up warm in the snow, but have you ever seen snow up close? Now we're going to look at snowflakes, the smallest form of snow. What do snowflakes look like? Snow is made up of snowflakes. Now snowflakes are made up of tiny ice crystals and the more crystals that stick together, the bigger the snowflake. The average snowflake is made up of about 200 ice crystals and snowflakes are always six-sided. If you look really closely using a microscope or something more powerful than our human eye, you might notice that each snowflake has a different pattern. So let's make our own snowflake. Get a square piece of paper or fold an A4 piece in two and cut to size. You then need to do four different folds. Top to bottom, left to right, top left to bottom right and top right to bottom left. You might have noticed how the original square is now split into all these little triangles. Well, in this triangle, you need to draw a simple design. This is what you'll be cutting out once the square is folded back together. Make sure you leave the corner attached to the center so the snowflake stays together. Fold the square back together and cut out the design you made. Unfold after cutting, and there's your snowflake. You can try some different patterns and you'll see how the snowflake looks different each time. I hope you enjoyed this lesson all about snow. Have fun, wrap up warm, and thank you for watching.